That's the man of the hour and the man who would lead Super Eagles to the 2026 FIFA World Cup in US, Mexico and Canada. And maybe the day is upon us. With less than 24 hours to go, we will be facing the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. We watch them train, although briefly, but as it stands right now, the Super Eagles are actually here preparing for this particular game. Your first thoughts? <laughs> oh, my first thoughts, a dicey game. Okay. A game that Super Eagles need three points or nothing. Um, since the insertion of this stadium itself, that's 2014, South Africa have not lost here. And the last time they played here, they got a victory. They got it done against um, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Daniel yeah, I remember. Exactly. He had a date to forget. He had a date to forget. <laughs> exactly. So this, yes. it, it's definitely not a full crop of the players that played that game that we play in. This is almost a full change. But we have Pesita, who did the final damage still in this uh, game. We saw them in, in, in the AFCON. Nigeria could not win in regular time to penalties. But this time out, no penalties. You need to get a win. No journey there. Because Nigeria sits third on the table behind South Africa and Rwanda. There is no... We don't need calculations, no permutations. It's too early. It's still early. But I think the earlier you pick the most needed points, the better for you. I don't think Nigeria at this stage, the acclaimed African giant, they should not be thinking of going to the playoffs. They need to get a victory. Um, an automatic sport. Okay, automatic sports as it stands. Group C, Rwanda has got four points from two games. South Africa, the Bafana Bafana have got three points from two games. And the Super Eagles of Nigeria. A lot of people, when the group was drawn, thought the Super Eagles easy peasy would dominate that particular group. But that hasn't been the case. They've made life difficult for themselves thanks to two needless draws. Now, the Super Eagles will be taking on the Bafana Bafana of South Africa. And as we go into that game, AB, uh, you mentioned something about tactics and the players. We know that our biggest fish, talking about Victor Seaman, is missing going into this particular fixture. But probably the massive reprieve will be the fact that we have another Victor returning back to the squad. <laughs> so Victor Boniface will be playing for the Super Eagles um, as he actually had a very bumper season. We know his teammate Netatella said he, he wants to actually just stay, take, off. stay off and take some time off to cool off after a very, very wild, wild west kind of season that Leverkusen did have. Talk to us about this particular changes. We know that Ndidi, who wasn't part of the AFCON squad, is back into the squad. And we're missing some key players. Do you think that would probably change how things will play out? Well, Nigeria has um, a lot of players in the arsenal. They have world-class players. They have top players. They have players who have um, potentials as well. We have Ademola Lukman, who was Fantastic. the hero of the Oosh. final, the Europa League finals. Mm. There's also Indidi and Iannaccio, who um, won the championship in the Premier yes. League. Yedika, who won and the Belgian championship. They have a lot of players there who could do the damage as well. Yes, they are missing Moses Simon, who was instrumental at the AFCON. They are missing Olaino. They are missing Ekong and so many others. But I think if Nigeria takes this game as seriously as they were at the AFCON, definitely they will get the important win against South Africa. South which, Africa, which they are not, they are okay. not a walkover because if you look at the team, yeah. really, aside Spesitao, Mokoena and the goalkeeper, you might really not say there's a star player there, but what makes them stand out is the fact that they've played together for a very long time. They have this synergy. They almost all play in South African League, so that's where they might have the edge, but all things being equal and I know that the support of the fans here in this Uyo Stadium, like we saw last year yeah. and we've always seen, could motivate them to get a victory. Yes, Lesser two and Zimbabwe, we didn't get, they did not get the most needed wins, but I think this time out, it's a do or die affair. Okay, do or die affair, you say. Because looking at those crop of players that are going to be missing for the Super Eagles, and they are spread across, of course, from the wing to the attack to the defense, and even the midfield. Which of these guys do you think? Because some are saying that without the leadership quality of William Truce Econ, it might be difficult for the Super Eagles. Some are saying that Victor Seaman, I doubt if they will miss him personally. Some are saying, of course, you've spoken about Moses Simon and what he brings in terms of pace and energy to the flanks. Who do you think will be sorely missed? Well, I feel for this particular game, there are two or three players who will be sorely missed. Yes, Victor Simeon is a star player, but I still think that when it comes to this African football, it's, it's an African football, obviously. Olaino, Moses Simon, 
and from what Ekong showed at the AFCON, they will be great innings because these are key positions. We saw um, the overlapping Moses Simon did at the AFCON and he has always done yeah. how he races and outpaces and stresses the defense of every other team. And there's a lot you know who is good attacking wise. He almost never has a wrong foot in a game. So I think these three players are key players. But there are still inclusion of players who were not at the AFCON. That's Victor C and Victor Boniface. Yeah. There's Wilfred Indidi who, mm -hmm. if who have been at the AFCON, so many have um, held of the opinion that the midfield would have been more compact if indeed he was in the AFCON. But now he's here, we'll see what he can bring to the table. We know that he has a lot to bring to the table. <laughs> All right, Amy. Oh, we see the players are actually about to begin their routine prayers, as they always do before every training and also every match. Amy, let me put you on the spot. So talk to me. Give me your prediction. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that would be a very dicey one. I think... <sighs> okay, I think 2-1 in favor of Nigeria. I, I'm, also, I'm also voting for a 2-1 <laughs> win. Uh, but the Super Eagles, they did all the prayers, I must say. And at the same time, we hope that all the troubles getting into Uyo can be put behind them. Mm -hmm. The absence of um, Dada Debola Wakachi can be put behind them. And the lateness they, of some players. Yes, can be put behind them. <laughs> And they play and give us the results. Mm -hmm. Some of the players have said that, don't worry, just come out to support us, we'll deliver. I think so many fans are also waiting to see how the players sing the national anthem <laughs> <laughs> on that day. But yeah. we'll see. I think it's going to be a fascinating game. We hope Nigeria gets a victory. We hope we see smiles on the faces of Nigerians yeah. after this game. But I think it's going to be a highly anticipated one. We'll watch and see what the Super Eagles have to tomorrow. offer. <laughs> 8 p.m. tomorrow.